How to rebuild a shock. Here are a few of the tools you may need. You'll need a shock disassembly tool if the end cap threads on. Something that you can pull and push on with the Schrader valve. We made this, it just threads right directly onto the Schrader valve. An Allen wrench if that's required. Something you can pull a snap ring out if it doesn't have eyelets. A torque wrench to set proper specs. Something you can pull the internal floating piston out with. This is an IFP tool. Snap ring pliers if you're working on some bigger shocks. And a rubber mallet. You'll also want some dial indicators to check valve specs. A tape measure may also come in handy. Step 1. Mount the shock in a vise and release nitrogen pressure. In an air shock or an emulsion, you'll need to hold the shock upright or oil will spray out. But in a remote reservoir, you can easily mount it in the vise before releasing the pressure. Step 2. Remove seal cap and shaft assembly. Loosen any set screws or bolts and remove the end cap. A disassembly tool here is helpful for end caps that are threaded on. You will need to push the seal assembly down to expose the snap ring. This can usually be done after the dust cap is removed. Use a pick to remove the snap ring. Carefully remove the shaft assembly. Try not to spill any oil here. Step 3. Remove the old oil. Use a jug to capture the old oil. Pour the old oil out of the shock body. Make sure you invert the reservoir so most of it comes out. If there's a reservoir, you're going to want to tap the end cap in to expose the snap ring. Use a pick to pull the snap ring out. Use a valve stem removal tool to remove the end cap. Thread the IFP tool into the boss inside the reservoir. Carefully pull the IFP out. Now you can drain the rest of the fluid from the reservoir. Step 4. Disassemble shaft assembly. Mount the shaft assembly in a vise and remove the nut that retains the piston. Gently pull all of the components off of the shaft. Lay out the parts in the order they were installed to facilitate reassembly. First you will want to inspect the Teflon coated bearing for burrs. If there are any, it's time to replace it. This bearing is not included in any rebuild kits. You'll need to buy it separately. Step 5. Replacing seals on the bearing cap and seal assembly. Remove the old seals from the bearing cap and the bearing assembly. Make sure to notice the orientation of the seals. You'll want to reinstall them the same way they come out.
Before reassembly, you'll want to make sure everything is clean. Then you can reinstall the O-rings and seals as necessary. Step 6. Reassemble shaft assembly. Carefully reinstall the components in the order they were removed, in the same orientation as well. Pistons are directional. Make sure you reinstall the piston in the proper direction. Make sure you torque the retaining nut to the proper specifications. Step 7. Disassembly and reassembly of the reservoir. Gently tap the hose end cap to expose the snap ring. Use a pick to remove the snap ring and then remove the end cap. Next you want to replace the o-ring on the hose end cap. Make sure it's clean before you reinstall the new one. Reinstall the hose end cap in the reservoir cylinder. Then you want to replace the snap ring. Make sure the snap ring is properly seated. Replace the seal and wear band on the IFP. Make sure it's clean before reinstalling new seals. Carefully reinsert the IFP in the reservoir. Make sure the wear band seats properly. Bottom out the IFP in the reservoir to make bleeding the air out easier. Fill the shock three quarters full with oil. Use the IFP tool to plunge the IFP in and out of the reservoir until no more air bubbles come up through the oil in the shock body. Use a tape measure to set the IFP to the manufacturer's specified depth. Step 8. Reinstalling the shaft assembly. Top off the shock body with oil, but remember to leave room to reinstall the shaft assembly. Then carefully replace the wear band on the piston. Make sure oil is coming out the sides as you reinstall the shaft assembly and that there are no air bubbles. Push the bearing assembly down into the shock body to expose the snap ring groove. Replace the snap ring and make sure the snap ring seats properly. Use the IFP tool to seat the bearing assembly against the snap ring. Make sure to double check that you have the proper IFP depth. 
reinstall the bearing cap. Tighten any bolts or set screws to the proper torque. Step 9. Reinstalling reservoir end cap. Make sure the reservoir end cap is clean and has fresh seals before reassembly. Reinstall the reservoir end cap in the cylinder. Then install the snap ring. Step 10, charge the shock with nitrogen. Check the manufacturer specifications for proper PSI. Only use nitrogen, no compressed air. Thanks for watching. Visit us at offroad-engineering.com.